Here's an expression that at first glance might seem hopelessly complex. An infinite nested radical that goes on and on forever. But here's what's remarkable about it. Despite all this apparent complexity, it actually equals a single, perfectly defined number. So let's figure out what that number is. The first thing we need to do is give this expression a name. Let's call it x. But before we dive in, there's an important question we need to address. Does this infinite expression actually converge to something? So let's say the value of our entire expression is x. It turns out we can prove this does converge. If we think of this as building up a sequence by adding more and more layers, each step makes the value bigger, but there's a ceiling it can never pass through. By something called the monotone convergence theorem, any sequence that keeps growing but stays bounded must settle on some finite value. So we're good to proceed. Now here's the key insight. Look at what's inside that first square root. After the 1 plus 4, we have exactly the same pattern repeating again. This self-similarity is what makes the problem solvable. So we can replace that entire inner part with x again. What we get is this beautifully simple equation where x equals the square root of 1 plus 4x. Great. Now we have something we can actually solve. We could throw the quadratic formula at this, but let me show you a more elegant approach using a technique called completing the square. First step, let's get rid of that square root by squaring both sides. Now, let's rearrange this to set up for completing the square, moving all the x terms to one side. Now, here's the key to completing the square. We take half the coefficient of x, which is negative 2, square it to get 4, and add that to both sides, adding 4 to both sides. On the right side, 1 plus 4 is 5, which gives us 5. And now the magic of completing the square reveals itself. The left side is a perfect square, x minus 2 all squared. Taking the square root of both sides. And don't forget, when we take a square root, we get both positive and negative solutions. Finally, adding 2 to both sides to solve for x. So we get two possible values for x. But wait, we have two solutions, and our original expression should only have one value. So which one is right? And more interestingly, where did that extra solution come from? Our two potential solutions are 2 plus the square root of 5 and 2 minus the square root of 5. Here's what happened. When we squared both sides earlier, we accidentally created an extra solution. Squaring can merge two different equations into one. So our algebra was actually solving both the original problem and a sneaky negative version at the same time. Now, 2 minus the square root of 5 is negative, so that can't be our answer. It's the solution to that negative twin problem we accidentally included. Which leaves us with our answer, 2 plus the square root of 5. But let me show you something cool we can actually visualize why that extra solution appeared by graphing this problem. The solutions to our equation are where these two graphs intersect. Here's y equals x, and here's y equals the square root of 1 plus 4x in green. But notice, I'm also plotting the negative version in red, which is what we accidentally included when we squared. And there you have it. The line intersects the green curve at our positive solution, and that red ghost curve at the negative solution we don't want. Our algebra saw both intersections because when we squared, it couldn't tell the difference between the green and red curves. This is why it's always important to check your solutions against the original problem. All right, so we've solved our puzzle, but you know what's great about math? The answer to one question usually opens the door to even more interesting questions. Like, what was so special about the number 4 in our expression? What if we replace it with some general number n? Let's see what happens. Using exactly the same self-similarity trick as before. We get this general quadratic for any positive n. And solving for the positive root gives us this elegant universal formula. Now, this formula reveals something pretty amazing. What happens if we plug in n equals 1, the simplest possible case? Plugging n equals 1 into our formula, simplifying under the square root. 
we get 1 plus the square root of 5, all over 2. Wait, that's the golden ratio. Phi, one of the most famous constants in all of mathematics. Our general pattern has the golden ratio hiding inside it as the simplest case. But why stop there? We generalize the coefficient, but what about that one at the beginning? Let's call that a and generalize that too, replacing everyone with a. Now we have the most general version of this type of nested radical. Same self-similarity logic gives us this master quadratic. And here's our master formula. For any positive a and n, this single expression can solve any nested radical with this pattern. So let's step back and see what we've discovered. We started with what looked like an impossibly complex infinite expression. But by noticing its self-similar structure, we turned it into a simple equation. Then by exploring what happens when we change the parameters, we found connections to the golden ratio and discovered a universal formula. That's really what math is about. It's not just about getting the right answer. It's about seeing the deeper patterns that connect seemingly different ideas. Sometimes the most intimidating problems are hiding the most elegant solutions. Thanks for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed exploring the hidden structure of infinite nested radicals, consider liking this video and subscribing for more mathematical adventures. Until next time, keep questioning and keep discovering.